Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Joanna Woodruff, and I've been in the healthcare setting practicing for over 25 years. Currently, I am a case manager and a started care nurse with St. Joe's Home Care that currently holds about every month we have a census, currently about 750 to 900 patients we service in the community. And of that population, most of them have a chronic illness, and that's why we've been referred in. Um, it might be a surgical uh, problem, but usually it's due to a chronic illness. And of that population, I usually case manage currently about 46 patients in the community. In home care, chronic conditions and the utilizations of health care services are growing. And it's going to be pivotal to have patients and family members engaged in their health care education. Due to the health laws changing, Medicare, Medicaid, it'll be very pivotal that they are engaged in, in their care needs. And that is what generated or my inspiration for motivational interviewing in the home care setting. My presentation objectives are identifying the importance of motivational interviewing in the home care setting instead of nurse guided education in the patient population diagnosed with diabetes type 2 mellitus. Discuss the need of further research in the home care setting regarding motivational interviewing. Identify positive outcomes when utilizing motivational interviewing in the healthcare setting, and discuss why ORM self-care framework would be best nursing theory to be implemented when implementing motivational interviewing in the home care setting. My key terms are motivational interviewing. It's a form of collaborative conversation and strengthening a person's own motivation and commitment to change. The next is chronic illness. Chronic illness is an illness that continues indefinitely. It limits an activity and requires ongoing activities and response from patients and caregivers. Example, diabetes type 2 mellitus. A lot of my patients that I care for have diabetes type 2 and it does cause many secondary complications which could create readmissions in the hospital. Home care is a health service that's provided in a patient's home, place, or residence, which is a place of the purpose is promoting and maintaining health and restoring and minimizing the effects of illness and disability. My overview. Patients with chronic illness is willing us to follow their plan of care. Currently, as a case manager, I go in and identify patients' need for education. And many of them, we go back and the idea is to have them repeat teach. We use teaching resources, um, sheets that um, St. Joe's has provided that are accepted. And many times, you're repeating the information back and they're not logging their blood sugar results. They don't understand. Um, and so through that, nurse guided and lecture methods usually only are successful by a 5 to 10 percent rate of retention. So this is why motivational interviewing is a client-centered approach to assist the patient in identifying their internal goal to change their behavior. 75 percent of the nation's health care budget is spent treating chronic illness. Assisting such as case managers, assisting the patient to identify educational needs of their illness is important for them to become independent. Currently, nurse case managers instruct patients and families through lecture and guided education, which we know really isn't that successful. That's only a 5 to 10 percent retention. Background. New York State Health Department identified that approximately 6.2 million adult New Yorkers a year suffer from a chronic illness. From that population, 3.7 to 4.2 million adult New Yorkers are with pre-diabetes. New York State Health Department and Centers for Medicare is promoting evidence-based interventions to prevent or manage chronic illness. 
And that is why I chose case managers. They identify educational needs at the start of care. Patients and families currently are not engaged in an educational plan that leads to readmissions most of the time through hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia, or secondary complications, their wounds not healing because their blood sugars are over 200. Centers for Medicare Services states that readmissions cost $17.8 billion a year. Motivational interviewing can be effective in assisting the patient in identifying his or her internal goal to change. My PICO question is, patients of the home care setting, they have type 2 diabetes mellitus. The intervention is motivational interviewing, and then the comparison would be without motivational interviewing. And the outcome would be patients identifying own educational needs and decreased readmissions in the hospital, and also the belief that they can attain their health goals, increase their self-efficacy. The theoretical framework I chose with Dorothea Orm self-care. Self-care nursing model introduced in 1959, Dorothea Orm created. Orm theory describes the nurse role in helping persons experience inabilities to self-care. The goal of Orm's system is to meet the patient and family's educational plan until they are capable of providing care. Successfully meeting universal and developmental of self-care requisites is an important component in order for a patient and family to be independent in their care. Further, Orm has four patient concepts, self-care, self-care agency, therapeutic self-care demands, and self-care deficit. Again, assisting a person to identify the current knowledge of potential health problems needed for promoting self-care behaviors. Self-care agency is a human being engaged in self-care development, state age and life experience, and social culture. Therapeutic self-care demands are activities that protect an individual in order to maintain health and well-being. Again, a starter care nurse and case manager identifies these needs and deficits and helps the patient and family identify um, their educational needs. And through motivational interviewing, this could further, by identifying, letting them be able to state what their needs are instead of the nurse lecturing to them what they've observed upon that plan of care. To hopefully for further form collaboration amongst the patient and the family with the nurse. Why use ORM's methodology? Case managers, again, identify self-care deficits upon the start of care and implement educational needs. ORM uses a case management approach to patient care, nursing diagnostic, regulatory, and control operations. In reviewing my literature, I had to include the terms motivational interviewing and diabetes type 2 mellitus. The terms I excluded were nurse coach and wellness coaching. When using those other terms, it, it doesn't include motivational interviewing. There's the next two graphs depict increased adherence to the plan of care with the intervention of motivational interviewing. I reviewed 10 articles, which you'll see on these two graphs, they've been divided five on this one and five on the other. Um, in reviewing the five articles on this graph, it improved A1C, decreased disease complications, increased self-efficacy, more frequent glucose monitoring. In the second graph, again, a total of 10 articles reviewed, improved A1C compliance, decreased disease complication, increase of self-efficacy where a person would have the belief to perform the, the care that they would need, and more frequent glucose monitoring. Five of those articles assisted an individual in believing that they could attain their health care goals. That's significant. My next graph in review of the 10 articles that I researched is comparing health settings. 
most of the articles, or pardon me, the research was performed in free clinics, primary private care settings, and two of the studies were survey form utilizing clinics, and none was performed in home care. And again, the studies were performed in free clinic and private primary care. And home care had no further, with a total of 10 articles. Home care collaborates and uses and comes up with a plan of care with multiple health disciplines from private primary care and the free clinic. But the physician gives orders and agrees with our plan of care that we develop with the patient and family in the home. So why not further research in home care? This, um, the 10 articles rendered strong evidence that it would be worth researching for further and implementing. Review of literature conclusion. All literature reported positive outcomes when implementing MI. No research found in regards to home care setting. In various health care settings and studies reported positive outcomes when applying MI. My strength of evidence. Out of the 10 articles, I had two meta-analysis, and then a variety of one, level three, all the way to level six. This provided strong literature that further research would provide positive information in, in the home care setting would be worth researching further. Clinical relevance. New York State Health Department reports that there's an increase of current conditions, adverse outcomes, including mortality, hospitalizations, and increased poor functional status. And I can tell you, our current patient population is growing. For the past three years, working at St. Joe's in home care, on a monthly basis, we usually, between 24 case managers, carry about a population of 750 patients. And currently now, the last six months, we are, due to health care reform, carrying a patient population of over 900 in the community, and almost all of them have chronic illness. So why not implement motivational interviewing? Improve A1C, self-efficacy, increased adherence of glucose monitoring, and disease complications. Further relevance is MI would be a valid tool in implementing educational plans with patients and families. Nurse-led education and lecture style are not, not effective. New York State Health Department, and not just the New York State Health Department, Medicare, Blue Cross Blue Shield with the new role that I'm taking as wellness coach, they are coming, I'm gonna help develop population health management. They want health professionals and organizations in the community to collaborate together to promote evidence-based interventions to promote health with individuals. So why not motivational interviewing? Recommendations. My first recommendation is educate nurse, nurses on motivational interviewing that hold the position case manager. New York State Health Department reports that 800,000 new cases a year are diagnosed just with diabetes, type two, mellitus, in our community in New York State. The second re recommendation would be once motivational interviewing is implemented in the agency, continual reinforcement would need to occur so that this practice would become more natural for us as opposed to how we instruct now at the current time. Recommendation three. Is Bloom's taxonomy when implementing instructional plan, choosing appropriate material and desired outcomes will further assist the teacher with implementing MI? Many times I have a variety, very diverse population. So along with motivational interviewing, it would be important to know your resources and your tools available to you because there's a lot of language barriers or just cultural differences on medications, you know, the belief in taking them. So this would help further your ability to instruct and fourth would be motivational interviewing would have to be placed into a standard practice. Behavior change is key to increasing preventative health behaviors, improving compliance with treatment regimens, or avoiding complications or further illness. 
Think positive. Motivational interviewing is an exceptional fit into the nursing profession and represents a respectful tool to promote behavior change. Conclusion. Home care case managers create and educate patients with chronic illness, type 2 diabetes, and autism. MI resulted in positive outcomes in all various levels of research performed when applied in the primary care setting, clinic settings. New York State Health Department is calling out to local organizations to collaborate to implement evidence-based interventions to promote that wellness. So why not promote it in home care? Currently, most diabetics, 40% of the population that is insulin dependent doesn't even check their finger sticks. So you can just imagine alone this one chronic illness and how much it has to do with people's health, how that would render if they just improve their glucose monitoring, how that would limit readmissions in the hospital and secondary complications and affect the cost as a nation. That's just New York State statistics.